Okay, we're talking about something today that's near and dear to me and it's disc herniations. And so I've experienced a disc herniation in the past and improving back stiffness after you've had a herniation is something that we, sh we should be focusing on, okay? I treat patients with back pain all the time. I'm a concierge physical therapist here in Jacksonville, Florida. And when people have had a history of disc herniations, they can be a little apprehensive about doing things to their back or improving back stiffness and improving mobility. And those are the types of things that we do. And so I'm gonna review with you today what you should be doing to help improve some of that back stiffness that is safe for a herniation. Now, I will also tell you that people don't really care about herniations until it starts involving nerves, right? When people think of disc herniations, they often think about pinched nerves. And then two, like a lot of people have herniations and don't even know that they have it. They may not even have pain. It is completely normal to have a herniation. It happens over time and it may not happen for any particular reason, but it's very, very common. Now that doesn't mean it's not uncomfortable or something that you shouldn't treat, but what I'm saying is that it's, it's fairly common. And so we wanna use some of that information knowing that what you're doing is safe for a herniation. <clears throat> two, we should also consider that disc herniations can absolutely reabsorb over time. And we it's proven in the literature, I could put that underneath the description, but when we do MRIs on people who are having an active herniation, having the nerve discomfort, and then we do an MRI later on, that, that disc herniation can absolutely be reabsorbed. But it doesn't mean that the stiffness isn't there or some weakness isn't there or some mobility deficits aren't there. And so just because the herniation reabsorbs doesn't mean that all of your problems are taken care of. So working with clients to improve their stiffness after a herniation comes along um, a time and time again. And those are things that I, I really enjoy doing. So I wanna go over two easy exercises today to help improve stiffness after you've had a herniation or during a herniation. Now I will tell you, the little caveat here is that I know you've probably done these before. But when you're dealing with something like a herniation and, and the spine in general, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And so a lot of very common exercises and mobility things out there, but I will tell you that no one knows your body better than you. And so listen to your body through these movements and just listen to my cues so you can kind of know what to look for and what that you should be avoiding as well. And, know, and since we know that it's not what you do, it's how you do it, don't feel like you there's any competition here, right? You're only competing against yourself. You want to improve stiffness over time. There is no one exercise miracle here. It takes time and effort. So if I could tell you anything before we do this is that try the exercises. I know you've done them before, but listen to my cues because maybe there's gonna be something new in there for you. Listen to your body as you go and stay consistent. I'm expecting some mild pressure in the back, but really no increase in discomfort. So keep that stuff in mind before we go over those two exercises right now. So let's talk about the disc here really quick. So the disc is the structure sitting right here in between the vertebral bodies here. And the disc is responsible for help controlling movement of the spine, so the flexion and extension and rotation. It's a static structure in that it's not contractile in that it's not like muscle where it shortens and lengthens and generates strength. It's more of a passive structure in that it just provides that stability, that strength, and that mobility in the spine to allow us to do amazing things like pick up really heavy things and bend over and whoa, bend over and pick up kids from the ground, et cetera, et cetera. When we had a when you've had a herniation, right, some of that nucleus papulsis, some of that inside disc material kind of gets close to the nerve and may send pain down your leg, et cetera, et cetera. Now, like I told you before, a lot of times that that herniation improves over time with conservative care and just natural healing of your body and that the herniation can be reabsorbed. But that doesn't mean the stiffness goes away and the discomfort, right? And so there's other things to the spine that we can improve. But with that disc, it moves forward and backwards a little bit and it's stretched and pulled certain ways when you bend forward and backwards. And so the two best things that I have found is working on flexion and extension extension and improving the nerve mobility and the um, health of the static and passive structures in your back to help improve back stiffness after a herniation. And so those are the two, those are some of the foundational thoughts to keep in mind when we go over these exercises. You're going to want to lay on the ground. That's typically the best place to do this. You can use a yoga mat. Um, you can take your shoes off. We're going to improve flexion and extension of your spine and improve some of that nerve mobility and stiffness in your back after you've had that herniation. These things work 100% of the time, but you're going to want to listen to your body as we go and listen to my cues so you can make sure it feels well and that it's definitely not going to make you feel worse. 
Okay, like I said earlier, you've probably done these before, but you're gonna to wanna to listen to your body and not go further, okay? And when people don't feel better after doing this, it's because of two, one of two things, that they've done too much, too fast, or they haven't listened to their body. And so I'm gonna explain some of that stuff today and go through these classic exercises to help improve some of that back stiffness Let's go. So the first one here is called a prone press and we're gonna combine that with a downward dog. So here's the prone press, you're on your belly, your hands are gonna be close to your face and you're gonna press up like this. Now, I will say most of the time when clients do this and it doesn't feel well is that when they go too far and they really try to get as much as they can, that doesn't feel well at all. You're gonna to wanna to keep your hips relaxed on the table and press up till you feel pressure in your back. Like I've said before, when you just listen to your body and go to where you feel mild pressure in your back, your body likes that. That repetitive motion is lotion for those joints and it's very safe for that disc in your back. Here we go, right? And so listen to your body. If that's only here for you, that's okay. If at first you can only get on your elbows and have to relax into that, that's fine too. But when you do this, you shouldn't feel anything more than just pressure in your lower back. If you're feeling referral down your leg or pain down your leg, your hamstring and your calf, that's enough. You're not doing any more right now. Push up and go back down. Motion is lotion. 15, 20 reps here. Slow and controlled. Now, I've seen people try to improve their stiffness and they can only get right here before they feel it. That's okay too. But you're gonna wanna focus on a keeping your back relaxed because we're trying to move the static structures of your back, which are not contractile. So don't use your back muscles to help lift you up. You're going to relax into that and push. Now the goal is not to straighten your arms all the way, okay? The goal is just to feel the pressure in your back and help improve some of that back stiffness. Now here's my favorite one. It's the downward dog, but it's, an, it's a focus into the nerve glides. So you're going to have your feet in line with your hips. You're gonna stick your butt in the air and then pedal your feet. <sighs> pedal, pedal, pedal. If you feel tension into your calf and down your leg, that is normal. Do not lift your head up. Pedal, 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 15, 20 times. <sighs> Relax, shake out those arms. Come back up, butt in the air, pedal, pedal, pedal. Do this three, four times with about 20 pedals. I promise you that you will be able to get up and feel less stiffness in your back, down your legs, and help improve that. In my clients who've had a disc herniation for a long period of time, when we do this little routine and we stay consistent, not only do they notice an improvement in their stiffness, but they're able to feel better, do more, have more range of motion in their spine, and just enjoy their day better. And so when you go through those, listen to your body. Do not push further than what you feel like you should push. It's about staying consistent and listening to your body so you don't have to take a step backwards. You can gradually move forward and feel better and better and have less and less stiffness. Now, I know you've probably done those before, but just give them a try again and stay consistent. Please leave any comments that you may have or questions that you may have so I can get back to you. I feel like everybody's body is a little bit different. I try to show you what's worked for most, but it may not work for all. But when we go through all of that, have some fun with it, improve some of that mobility, and as always, guys, stay healthy, keep moving, and take care of yourself.